Hey guys, my name is Rahul Aire and in this video, we are going to study about part two about serverless framework. That is, how can you create resources? That means, how can you really actually create a S3 bucket in serverless framework and how can you deploy that uh, Dynamo table as well? In the last session, what we have just saw is like, how can you create an API gateway and how can you just uh, attach an API gateway as a trigger to the Lambda? And then we later, we also really saw that how can you just make your S3 bucket as a trigger to the Lambda itself? But uh, during that time, when I just finished finish the editing itself, I realized that, hey, I have forgot to, to just uh, talk about uh, resources. I have forgot to talk about uh, plugins, serverless plugins and all of that. So this part two video is just exactly about all of that. But before going and before just moving and direct dive into the code, I will just like to take a moment and just thank you for all of the guys who just subscribed to this channel. Uh, we have just crossed 1K subs. So everyone and everyone and all of who have really subscribed to this channel and i just thank you for your support and all of that uh, it's not a typical youtuber why but uh it really means to me like you know i sub i sometimes i really even question that my previous videos are not that of great in quality but still uh you guys really appreciate it so that really means a lot to me so uh, nonetheless, let's get into the computer screen and let's try to understand how it really works. So as in the previous lesson, what we have saw is like this region was our, let's say, uh, US East one, that is Virginia. So right now we are just really converting that for Mumbai as well. We just created our uh, functions. We just attach our trigger that this is one our trigger. But for now, we don't need this. So what we'll do is we'll just comment it out for a while. And now we'll just focus on our resources parameter over here. So let me just uh, really like what we just do is let me just uncomment it for a while. So as you can see over here, it's really like that. This is our resource and this is our capital resource. So and this one is our name to the resources. So I can really name whatever I really want. Let's say uh, let's AWS CKT AWS bucket. And then this is our, our type that is AWS colon colon S3 and then bucket. So what is my bucket name? One thing that you should really remember is that your bucket name should be always unique. If it's not really unique, if, if anyone has already taken that name, uh, you will get some error. So in that case, really make sure that your bucket name contains some random characters so that it, it really gets a unique name itself. So what we can do is here, let's say in we are gonna just use our previous name over here. Let's copy this and let's come over here again uh yeah so now what we can do is let's say we'll try to deploy this sls dep deploy uh, it will take some time so i'll fast forward this process oh so we got an error i think uh our oh, one thing i remember our direct directory was wrong so let me just go it into the correct directory e a r d one okay and then let's say sls deploy Okay, as you can see over here that our stack is got deployed. So what I can really just show you is right now, if you I, if I really just bring it over here, as you can see this, uh, our AWS bucket really got successfully created. And if you really now, let's see if you, if, if I just uh, bring this over here, and if you really now want to add some property to it, let's say if you really want to add a course property, how can you really do that? Well, that's pretty much easy. So let's say if you really want to do a course configuration, then what you can do is let's say, Let's say CO course configuration and then let's say allowed method. What we can do is let's say uh, we let's say get GET. What we can do is let's say we'll just allow it as put uh, as PUT and then what we can do is we uh, can allow as head post uh, POST post and then what we can do is allow as head GAD. So allowed origin as you can set anything, but in our case, let's try to do it as star. Now, to be cautious, don't use this star in production because it's really harmful and it's dangerous. But in our case, it's really kind of not that critical. So what we can do is let's say, uh, in our case, what we can do is let's say expose headers as let's say e tag, right? So let's say e d a g e tag. So let's try to deploy it again. Let's see what we can, what result that we get in our web console. So SLS and deploy. Okay. Okay. I think it got deployed. Let's try to check it again. So I'll just bring my S3 bucket over here. And then uh, what I'll just do is I'll go to the uh, properties. I'll just see what is, uh, if I, 
if there is any property that is that is deployed or not let me just try to refresh this for properties okay aws server trail access static works in disable okay it's it's in permission oh yeah so as you can see over here our policy really successfully got deployed the course policy was successfully deployed and if you want you can even control the access control list over here there are many resources out there on even on stack overflow and let's say serverless.com website but nonetheless uh, that's really the out of the scope of this topic if you want you can also try and check that out so now let's try to uh, create and deploy the table using serverless framework so let's try to do our let's say our uh, let's say any name as dynamo table a b l e and then what we'll do is let's say uh it's all indian is let's say as type as a w s colon colon d y dynamo db colon colon table and then what we'll just do is let's say we'll define as property p r o properties properties as let's say table name as our let's say dynamo table that would be let's say our dummy dummy table and then again what we'll define what we'll define as attribute definition attribute definition okay what we'll just do is again give it indentation and tab let's say what we'll just do is let's say attribute name as key give it some space and then what we'll just do is let's say our uh, attribute type as string okay this is doing some weird error and then again what we need to define as key key schema key key schema attribute name as key and then let's say key type as hash h a s h hash and then again what we need to define as we need to define as billing mode as pay per request I think there is some problem over here that it is really highlighting me over it. I think it's not attribute definition; it's attribute definitions. Okay, yeah. Uh, so now it is absolutely fine. Let's try to deploy this. S L S D E P L O Y deploy. Okay, where is that? Uh, it was line ninety one. Okay, key schema. Okay, looks like there was some indentation issues uh, which we have just solved it over here so it's now really deploying it so let's try and ultimately test it how it really works okay so it got deployed uh, let me just bring this my dynamo table over here okay what let me uh, okay where is that ah yeah here it is so as you can see I'll, I'll just refresh this now these two tables are something which I created earlier for my upcoming uh, course that is ultimate dynamo db course which you should definitely check it out link will be provided in the description so please check it out but then let's coming back to the point let's try to refresh this and see if our table really got deployed or not so as you can see over here the dummy table got deployed as you can see now you can do a crazy lot of stuff with it as you really want if you really want to do some uh, if you want to add gsi you can even add that if you want to add let's say our uh, LSI, LSI, LSI can be added. LSI can be only added at the time of creation of the table. So uh, you can do all of the crud operation. You can build your application. You can do anything with it as you really like. But last but not least, there's one thing that I've uh, left to show is like that there is serverless uh, framework and plugin over here. So if if I really come over here, that this is uh, URL at serverless.com slash plugins. This is the ultimate directory. I mean just take it as let's say serverless framework on a steroids what it will what it will basically allow you to do is uh, let's say if you think that your the serverless framework is lacking some functionality you can use this uh, plugins to really just kind of really add more functionality if you really want to add let's say uh, if in that case our dynamo db right if you are search for let's say dynamo let's say if you really want to deploy if you just want to create a dynamo db at a local without really just uh, sending your data to the cloud then you can really use this uh, dynamo db local as well 
if you want to enable the auto scaling you can use this and if you really want to let's say offline if you want to use let's say app sync you can even really do that so there you go this was our ultimate crash course on serverless framework now rest mastering the serverless is kind of really tricky and challenging you need to take kind of a lot of project you need to kind of really just uh, deep dive into all of these things and it really it, it will take some time to master all of the things but nonetheless i hope that this tutorial of mine would be really helpful for you in discovering all of this other aspect of serverless framework but nonetheless till then stay connected stay subscribed which is most important and i see you next time